September 8th, 2020, and this is a meeting of the Stewart County Board of Supervisors. We are originating from the admin building. Uh, public access is being provided via Zoom. Um, that's in terms of uh, Code Section 21.8.1, when, when a meeting in person is impossible or impractical, and that's because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hereby call the meeting to order and ask anybody who'd like to, to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Today is a special election day, so we have a limited agenda. Um, I would ask for a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved by Heaven. Second. Okay, moved by Heaven, second by Olson. Heaven? Aye. Olson? Aye. Mark and I, agenda adopted. Next, updates on COVID-19. Do staff have any updates they would like to share with us at this point? If not, any updates from the supervisors? Supervisor Heaven, have you looked at numbers today? I did, and I left my numbers in the office, but I think there were, um, well, I'll have to double check. I, I know for Story County, I believe we only had uh, only uh, uh, 27 new positive cases, zero additional deaths, and two are hospitalized. But let me look at the other numbers and I'll let you know. Okay. And I also wonder if like, over Labor Day weekend, I wonder if there was lower reporting, lower testing. Sure. Okay, anything else? If not, I will open public comment session number one. This comment period is for the public to address topics on today's agenda. I don't see any raised hands. Do you, Leanne, or and either raise your hand if you're on Zoom or hit star nine to unmute yourself if you're on your phone. Uh, seeing no, seeing nobody, um, I'll close public comment session one. We'll go on to discussion and consideration of items brought before the board with requests for immediate action. Are there any? Hearing none, we'll move on to consideration of minutes from the September 1, 2020 meeting. Are there any corrections to the minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'd so move. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, Olson? Aye. Aye. Merck and I. Uh, next, we'll go on to personnel actions, and I've been notified of two additions. One is a new hire, or two new hires, effective 9-9-2020 in the auditor's office. Cindy Cole at $15 an hour, and Whitney Maricall at $15 an hour. So with those additions, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, personnel action forms as listed. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? If not, Kevin's. Aye. Olson? Aye. Okay, aye. And adopted. Next is consent agenda. And is there anything to be pulled from the consent agenda? I don't have anything. No. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve consent agenda as uh, listed. So moved. Second. Olson? Aye. Kevin, aye. Merck and I. Consent items are adopted. Now we'll go to additional items. We have a security resolution. Resolution 21.19 to restrict the carrying, possession, or transportation of firearms or other dangerous weapons in the Story County Justice Center pursuant to Iowa Code 724.28 sub 4. Is there somebody from the uh, Sheriff's Office on the line? Somebody's trying to get in, they can't. Yeah, we'll need to uh, bargain on the can't control and she's got the settings. That works, right? Julie just got on. There we go. Julie Erickson, are you on the line now? Can you unmute yourself, Julie? She's from the attorney's office. Ah, oh, that's never right. Mind, that's right. That's right. So we don't have anybody from the sheriff's office. We did get a, a, um, a description of this, however. Um, I believe that it, what it basically is, is, be, is that the code does allow, um, allow us to restrict carrying possession or transportation of firearms um, if we have 
armed security. And the sheriff's office presented this resolution and it's because of some high profile trials that are coming up soon. So um, I guess we don't have anybody to answer questions, but I think um, we did individually get uh, contacted by the sheriff's office. So do either of you have any concerns about going forward with this? No, and I, if, I, if I recall my discussion with the sheriff's department as well, these are for limited, not for all cases, but for correct for okay. limited. I profile and uh, capital or murder. Right. Okay. Uh, I move approval of resolution 21-19. I second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, Hedden. Aye. Olson. Aye. Okay, aye. Adopted. Next we'll go to consideration of advertising for storm debris site for $846.75. Um, Leanne Harder, would you present, please? Um, the item before you is to um, advertise in the sun beginning September 16th, so a week from tomorrow, through the end of the month, um, through September 30th. That would be the weekly Wednesday that goes throughout Story County to the house to households. Um, I did give a draft to the board of what the size would look like. Um, this is a draft that came from the paper this morning. Um, Supervisor Olson has a couple of um, corrections or issues to address as well as, I think, Linda, you say you might have some as well. Yeah. Um, as soon as this is good to go, I can get to the paper they'd like to get sooner today so we can meet next Wednesday's deadline or next Wednesday's publication. Um, it's about $850. And that is a slightly reduced rate um, than if it was just normal three runs. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, Supervisor Olson, you have some questions? Oh, sure. I, I didn't have questions. I just had a couple of edit comments and um, I sent them to Leanne. One was a hyphenation and the other one, uh, of a word, hyphenation of two words. And then the other one had to do with, we. it says we recommend face coverings um, when social distancing isn't possible. And I uh, suggest that we change that to require. This is, is uh, common use property under the control of the Board of Supervisors. Therefore, it fits within our policy. I know our policy says, you know, we usually think of it as within, with inside. Uh, but in this particular situation, some member of the staff or a volunteer, if they got some from the public, is going to have to go close enough to a driver or, or a passenger to verify residency. And therefore, I think we want that person that they're verifying to wear a mask at that particular time. My only concern about that is I have visited the site a couple of times and it's obviously outside. Uh, people are not getting out of their vehicles other than to um, other than to unload them. And they're unloading them probably at least 50 feet, 100 feet away from where our staff are, from, from where they come to us. So I, I would hate to see somebody drive all the way across the county and then be, be told to leave because they didn't have a face covering with them. And I'm oh, yeah. No, I'm not talking about as they're unloading, but um, I, when I went out there the first Saturday too, it happened to be Jerry Moore who was there, uh, you know, kind of greeting people. But there is a moment where there has to be close enough contact for whoever is verifying residency of that person to get something from the person. It's him, him or herself whether it be an envelope showing an address in the unincorporated area or a driver's license or something. There's that point. And, and the whole sentence does say required when you can't physically distance. Certainly as people are unloading and they're six feet away, they're 50 feet away. I'm just saying that it's for the handing over of the documents showing that, yes, I am a resident of rural Story County. 
So are you, are you, I just want to make sure I'm sorry, I'm going to to say that PPE or face masks is required if you cannot meet the six feet social distancing, is that? Yeah. Yes, and that's the sentence. The sentence says face uh, coverings, I think, okay, are, are recommended if you can't meet the six feet social distancing. And I'm just saying we need to pull out the recommend and put in required. So that covers that period of time when the, the employee or the, or the volunteer who is, is actually verifying residency so that the uh, drop off person can come in and unload that that's when there's contact within six feet. It's probably the, it's the only time most likely. It's the only time and it's just so very brief, but I. So, okay. So, so under that theory, people passing each other in the halls are brief. People standing within six feet of each other are brief. I think there's, there's an argument for consistency here. Let me complete my sentence if you will. What I was going to say is I could go with that as long as we can get planning and development, some of those single use masks and they can give them to people. Cause I would hate to see somebody driving miles and then, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have a face covering back up please and get out of here. That, that doesn't make sense to me. So if we can get some disposable masks with them so they can offer one to people, then I'm fine with it. I think that's reasonable. That sounds reasonable to me. Did you have any other suggestions? No, that was it. Uh, Supervisor Hedens? No, I'm fine uh, after I found where she was referring to. I so. had a couple things and they're really not context. I did ask Leanne if we could brand this and she said she could move the heading over to the left, left justify it and put the Story County logo there. And I think we need to do that. My only suggestions are to get fewer words in it and they're things like, where it says it is self hall drop off only. I'm taking off the it is taking off um, adjectives when I feel like we don't need does and that kind of thing, just to make it a little larger. I think we could cut it down, you know, and have, you know, larger print. So those are not, they're not contextual. So I would just say, is it okay if I just give those to Leanne? They're just to shorten it. It's fine with me if it's, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Then I um, would entertain a motion for approval of the request to advertise the storm debris site with um, self hall being um, hyphenated face coverings required instead of recommended and with, with some shortening just in terms of taking out words that aren't necessary. I so move. Second. Okay. Olson? Aye. And aye. Merkin, aye. Approved. Um, we're down to upcoming agenda items. Are there any things we need to talk about that we don't already have kind of slated? Not right at the moment, I don't. Nothing from Supervisor Head. Supervisor Olson, do you have anything? Uh, as far as, uh, no, uh, we know that we have the special, we may have a special meeting on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Right. Uh, if we get recommendations the regulations uh, referred over from the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. okay. I think there are a couple other things that staff may put on that agenda that may come up since we have a limited agenda today. There'd be more um, time. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I also would like in the next um, possibly a couple of weeks, def I think definitely, to get an update about where we are on suggestions for using about the $1.2 million that's coming from the state for via the CARES COVID. Um, though that money must be used by the end of the year is my understanding. So I've not heard any real definitive suggestions come forward. 
Um, I'm going over kind of my committees and taking a look at, at my areas of emphasis to see if there's money that can be used there um, to be used for part of the 1.2. And also I'm not aware of any requests that we may have received from our s smaller cities um, or if that would factor in. But so I'd like to see a discussion within the next couple of weeks on that. And Sandra, you might be uh, have some thoughts on that. And just some discussions. I know we've had a discussion with emergency management and some other things coming up. Okay. And the resolution. Pardon? I plan to bring the resolution just for the money itself on the tent. Okay. Good. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Because she's planning, she needs to have us um, approve a resolution to um, accept the money or to apply for the money, and she'll bring that on the 10th on Thursday. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we need to apply for it, and Sandra's working with other staff right now on getting that application done by the 15th. So it's not just that the check doesn't just come to us, there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done to get that money, and staff are working on that. Okay, anything else? Okay, then let's go to public forum number two. Comments from the public on items not on this agenda. We cannot take any action due to the requirements of the open meetings law at this meeting, but may do so in the future. I'll open public, uh, public forum number two and ask if there are any uh, comments from members of the public. If so, would you raise your hand if you're on Zoom on a computer or hit uh, star nine to unmute yourself you're on the phone. Don't see anybody, so I'll close public forum number two. Next, we have liaison assignments, committee meeting updates and announcements from the supervisors. Supervisor Heavens, did you want to start? Sure, I have a ICAP planning and zoning training webinar um, this afternoon from White South 4. Uh, then I'm going to attend the Colo City Council meeting tonight. Uh, tomorrow I have drainage district meeting at 8 a.m., um, CCMT at 10, and then the Board of Health does have their public meeting tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Thursday, uh, possible for a um, board meeting, financial the asset joint funders, and then jurisdictional meeting Thursday night. Friday, I will be volunteering in the morning, um, and then I have a DCAP meeting in the afternoon, um, and I'm the 14th, um, so I'll go to that next Monday. Um, I have a boost meeting uh, at 5.30, and then I also want to mention that there, the Mental Health Expo this year is virtual, and that will begin at 6 p.m. on Monday the 14th. Supervisor Olson. Um, so tonight, uh, the Ames Area Metropolitan Planning Organization meets and uh, we will look at the scoring matrix or scoring points assigned to suggested uh, the proposed uh, transportation projects related to the 2045 forward transportation plan. Uh, I believe, supervisors, you'll see that just a few minutes before our meeting started, Darren Moon sent us an email uh, noting that there were not a lot of the projects that we were concerned about that made it into uh, the top of either one of the scoring uh, systems. One scoring system was based upon, um, uh, I think, ongoing um, use based upon improvements, uh, based upon benefit to the community. The second scoring system is based on fiscal restraint. What kind of money is anticipated to really be together or, or to be available? So the one project it looks like that got um, at the top for both of those seems to be on hide uh, some type of traffic control or some type of intersection changes at Hyde and 190th Street. 
Um, so tonight, as, as the discussion occurs, I will be uh, trying to advocate for a couple more projects that we had indicated uh, related to uh, Cameron School Road, George Washington Carver intersection, and up in the northwest part of the county. Uh, so, and so I think Supervisor Merkin is going to listen in on that, which is great because um, we just need to really advocate that while these are scoring methods, they don't always take into account the realities of what happens as uh, the city of Ames continues to annex into the county. So my other meetings are the drainage district meeting. Um, I have 930 on that, Lisa, on Wednesday morning, not 8 a.m., but uh, I'll go back and check my agenda. And of course, the CCMT meeting. The, uh, I will be listening in to the Board of Health special meeting on uh, face covering regulations if they want to do a recommendation to us. There's Thursday with the tentative special meeting, the asset joint funders meeting, and the jurisdictional meeting on Thursday. Uh, I would like to give an update on a couple of items that uh, related to committees I'm on. One is that uh, the Central Iowa uh, Workforce Region um, is now starting to reach out to look for the one-stop agency that will be needed under the uh, reorganization to help coordinate uh, the programs for displaced workers, for youth, uh, et cetera, that comes through that Title I federal grant money. And so I'm I know there are not a lot of uh, or any providers on today, but I would like to remind everybody uh, that if you know of an agency that has provided services related to uh, employment, uh, just especially for workers who need to be retrained uh, for at-risk youth, and I believe youth is actually defined up there to 21, I believe, and so that uh, please, you know, please contact me and uh, I'll give them the information to refer over. Also, you saw an email from me late on Friday uh, where the uh, Iowa Workforce Development has decided to apply for a federal grant that would help um, pay displaced workers who would be hired and help provide their equipment to employers um, that would be working on projects uh, that caused by needing restoration or repair from the deratio. Um, the quick turn, it's a very quick turnaround time. Um, I appreciate hearing back from Keith Morgan already, I'm waiting to hear back. I did send it to the chamber and then I know that um, uh, it was also distributed to some other department heads here at the county. It's, they need the information by tomorrow morning. So I don't know that I'm going to be responding anything more than maybe passing along the email from Keith Morgan saying, boy, this is tight turnaround time and a lot of a cleanup may have been done, but uh, there may be some work in the future. It, it, it's really a tough turnaround. would like to give you an update on uh, uh, two updates on HERDA. First of all, um, as you remember that we approved some of our fiscal year 20, fiscal year 21 asset money to pay for rides within Ames because the Ames allocation uh, was not going to cover it and HERD has had to re, uh, redesign how which particular funding silo it bills for what types of rides. So HERDA has drawn down 21,000 of the Ames money in just two months. Uh, July and August, and uh, when the HERDA staff had presented to us, they had thought that they, the money for Ames would only last about four months, and it looks like they're right on target with that. So they'll, be begin, they'll start probably using some of that Story County asset money uh, by the end of October. Also, discussions have started on the program parameters for the VAN program, and um, we've got some glitches, I think, to work out between understandings of what private industry does and what will be the parameters to use taxpayer money from. Um, after this meeting, I'm going to try and uh, reach out to her to staff and to Sandra and see if we can't get a Zoom meeting with all of us together so we can get a better on the same page about how that money would be billed to us. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. Um, 
Supervisor Heavens, uh, I did not tell you, and I should have, I'm going to the Colo City Council meeting tonight. I was asked to go as part of the Conservation Board because they're going to be talking some more about Hickory Grove. Okay. okay. And I believe it's an in-person meeting. It is. That's okay. Um, I will check the drainage district. I have both 8, 8 tomorrow, 8 and 9.30 on my calendar, and I have a feeling there really is only one, and it's 9.30, but I will double check that, yeah. Scott. I just Scott, and the, it only shows the agenda of 9.30, but I almost had the 8 o'clock, not the 9.30 that Laura got, so that's why I did the look. And no. did he say it's 9.30? He has not responded okay. yet, but that's okay. all that's showing on the... Okay. Site. Well, please let me know. <laughs> Thanks. Several other meetings, but I tell you what, we're on a limited agenda today because the auditor's office is busy and because of the election, so I got pretty much the same meetings I think everybody else does. So I'll just, uh, I don't have any other reports to make. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Peasants. Aye. Olson. Aye. Merkin, aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.